At one point in time, Yeet, Ken Carson, and Destroy Lonely. Wait, is he actually getting blackballed? Were the leaders of the new generation. Wait, he wanted to be Opium? All paving the way with their own style and sounds. Even at one point in time, releasing music together and performing on stage with each other. However, a couple platinum hits and a Drake feature later, Yeet was miles ahead of them. Breaking into the mainstream, leaving them in the dust and taking the spotlight away from them. And for some reason, it seems like Ken Carson, Destroy Lonely and the producer got jealous of Yeet's success. So they started attacking him online. Since Whether when? it was them calling Yeet Eminem with autotune and reverb, Ken and Lone liking tweets of Lil 88 dissing Yeet, or both for their producers taking jabs at each other niggas could be on the biggest album of the year and somehow they still bring you up put a name on it and let the fans know how you can jabs at each other it seems like something serious has gone down between the two parties so what relationship did opium and Yee have in the past what is the reasoning for these random attacks on Yee? and will we see this erupt into something more serious later down the line Let's bring it all the way back to 2021, where I personally think we had one of the greatest breakthroughs of underground rappers. Yee, Ken, Lone, Fago, and that's just G Kobe. Now, truthfully, it was always Yee, Ken, and Lone that had Yo, the Kobe, damn, son. But like on them to make it into the mainstream. Fago had a height for a while, but he's been next up since the Trump administration, so we can put him to the side for the time being. In 2021, Yeet would treat us to four different projects. Alive. Is this nigga using a Last of Us instrumental? 4L, Trendy, and Up To Me, with Alive being one of the most important in his career, as it was the first time you would hear Yeet experiment with the whole lot of red inspired rage beats. Yeet would continue with this sound across the next three projects, with them all receiving major success for an underground artist, especially with bro, the songs. You, you got so me thinking I'm playing Last of Us, bro. Sorry about that. Off the lot, Money So Big and Money Twerk, with all three of them having one specific thing in common. They were all produced by the man himself, Tragic. And Tragic is important to later on in the video, as he is heavily involved in the entire beef himself. And if you don't know who he is, well, as I just stated, he produced some of the first hit songs Yeet had. Money So Big would end up going platinum and to this day still claiming its spot on Yeet's most popular section under his Spotify profile. Sorry About That would also get a gold certification. Then in the same year, Ken Carson would drop his EP, Teen X Relapse, and his debut studio album, Project X. Destroy Lonely would also be announced why do, as a new- Why do producers get so, like, I feel like producers shouldn't get that personal with, like, the rap rappers so much to the point where they get into their beef. OPM member that year, with him dropping a handful of singles that year such as Hold My Hand, Tokyoto and I Love You So Much to tease fans for his upcoming debut studio album No Stylist. As we can see, 2021 was a breakthrough year for all of them. However, Yee was always significantly bigger than them, which was predominantly due to him being easier to market and also due to his viral TikTok songs. This caused Yee to grab the attention of arguably hip-hop's biggest artist, Drake. He would invite Yee out to a party where they would take one of the most iconic pictures in Yee's career. Now at this point in time, Yeet fans and underground listeners in general were going crazy. Seeing Yeet, who had only gained popularity just a couple months ago, when getting a this? cosign from one of the biggest guys in the game was insane. And truthfully, wasn't really on the same level Ken and Lone were on. Of course, Ken and Lone were pushed by Cardi himself, by either putting them in music videos or letting them produce on the album, but it wasn't a level playing field with the timing Yeet was on. Before we move into 2022, in the October of 2021, Yeet would take to his Instagram story to tease a collab with him and Ken, where he would post, who ready for this me x Ken, suggesting they have music together dropping soon. Just a month later in November, we would see Yeet and Ken collab for the first time, as Yeet would preview the song Pull Up, featuring Ken on an Instagram live. Which would eventually become a very highly anticipated snippet as Ken would start previewing the song himself. However, it would unfortunately never be released, but Ken would perform the song live multiple times and it would eventually leak later down the line. Anyways, we would actually see Yeet, Ken and Lone together for the first time as Ken was opening for Yeet's To A Live tour on the 21st of April Yo, in 2022. Yo, why do niggas like previewing their music and then not fucking dropping them? Like, are you 
edging your your fans what's the meaning of that in atlanta which was following the release of his second studio album to alive that debuted at number six on the billboard 200 albums chart and sold an immense 35,000 album equivalent units first week fun fact this tour stop in atlanta was at the same show september's rich threw a baby tantrum called the crowd dead dropped the mic and stormed off stage but right now these niggas so fucking dead which played a big factor in him being one of the most hated artists within the underground and another iconic moment in the history of Yeet. Wait, After the set stormed off, Yeet would then come out on stage with Ken. Moment in the history of Yeet. After set stormed off, Yeet will then come out on stage with Ken, opening their show with the collaborative song Geek High from Yeet's To Alive album, released in the February of that year. On stage with them would also be Tragic and Lone, where all four of them would be just dancing along with everyone else. The trio would be then seen together again after Icebox uploaded a video of them shopping for jewellery, which I'm presuming was taken around <coughs> the same time as this tour stop. Then in the summer of 2022, Ken would drop his second studio album X, executive produced by Playboy Carti, debuting at the 115th spot on the Billboard 200 Albums chart. Then Lone dropped his highly anticipated, long-awaited, debut studio album, No Stylist. Sorry to interrupt the video, but if you're enjoying so far, I'd appreciate you could subscribe, like, and comment. I'm trying to see Yeet and Ken would be relatively good friends, performing together, shopping together, and making music together. I don't know what Yeet's What's relationship that? with Destroy Lonely would be back then, but I doubt they had any issues, which makes things even more confusing later down the line. And even fans were questioning if Yeet and Lone were friends, as they were two very prominent and exciting artists in the underground who fans wanted to see make music together. However, no one really knew if they had collaborated. Now within the underground at the time, or even in this purgatory stage these three were in, with the fact that they're not exactly underground nor really mainstream, they- Nah, this nigga can really glowed up, bro. This nigga face used to be mad fat were all their own competition, as no one had hype like they did, which I personally think was a big factor in this beef that erupted later on. Now, as we move into late 2022 and 2023, we wouldn't really see or hear anything about Yeet collaborating with the Opium duo at all. They would all continue dropping solo projects and climbing their way up in the industry. Yeet would be landing collaborations with Young Thug, Gunna, Lil Uzi Vert, NBA Youngboy, and his number one charting hit with Drake, I Don't Give a Fuck, whilst Ken alone would only really work with each other and Homicide Gang. Ken did have Lil Uzi Vert on A Great Chaos and did produce X2 on Pink Tape. Now before Yeet dropped 2093 in 2024, Yeet's highest selling album was Afterlife, selling 55,000 album units first week, which compared to Ken's highest selling album A Great Chaos with 49,000 first week and Destroy Lonely's If Looks Would Kill selling 29,000 first week, it's very clear and obvious. Yeet's only competition were only Ken Carson and Destroy Lonely, which will explain a lot as we now move into 2024, where the beef would start brewing. On the 16th of February in 2024, Yeet would release his fourth studio album, 2093. Now this album had huge anticipation. It was supposed to be the one that- That shit was ass! No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It wasn't ass, it just wasn't what I thought it would be. And if you want to watch my reaction to that, it's on the channel. That launches him into the top of the industry with suspected collaborations from Drake and Childish Cambino. But after its release, a lot of fans were disappointed. Cambino? Many fans stated that the project didn't have the raw energy like his previous projects. I can see why some longtime fans are disappointed. Yeet sounds almost subdued, not as unpredictable and raw as his earlier shit. Also suffers a bit from utopia effect. Kind of vicious once you take away the big flashy production that being said i'm still fucking with this heavy the production is next level and ties it all together in a cohesive theme it's polished except for the mixing in some parts that's what i was saying i would i didn't like the mixing and then i didn't like how at the beginning of most songs it was like five minutes long bro now it wasn't that's exaggeration clearly but you feel me like it's it was like I don't know, there was just like long pauses. And I, I, I don't know, I wasn't really fucking with the beast selection of all of them. But still got that weird yeet vibe to it. Yeah, it did. It did have the weird yeet vibe, which is good. Feels like a solid artistic progression and curious to see if the 
if this catches it. But you know, you see, you know what's crazy? The 23 now, there were some good songs in there, probably like two or three in my opinion. But when this nigga just dropped Heli Man, King Tonka, and the other one, bro, that shit is that shit should have been on the album. It would have been a 10 out of 10 out of me, gang. Or at least a eight a eight out of ten. That shit was bro. King Tonka is valid, bro, and Heli Man is valid. Many songs sounded too it similar to one another and overall bad, just lacked bad, hits bad, like Yeet used to make. The album still performed well though, especially as Yeet dropped a part two of the album with two additional songs, As We Speak featuring Drake and Never Quit. Yeet would then deliver part three where he dropped a bundle of exclusive songs fans could buy on his website for $13, which was kind of a hack to get his album sales to be higher. The album ended up debuting at number two on the Billboard Hot 200 Albums chart, selling 70,000 70, units first week. So even though it still performed well, it didn't hide the fact that a lot of Yeet fans were disappointed and the fan base was even split in half, almost at war with each other, which was really the first time in Yeet's career we saw him take such a big L. Now as Yeet was down, it seemed like his competition, Ken and Lone, wanted to seize this opportunity and deliver the final blow to his career, which Bob Balam explained very well. I personally think it's because now that, you know, Yeet had his run, but now that he is a little bit vulnerable because people weren't messing with 2093 and so now- Yo, the niggas was moving crazy on me like I was bugging. Like, yo, I didn't even bash his shit, gang. I was jacking, I was jacking it. But, I, but you feel me? I Realistically, I haven't listened to a 2093 song in a minute. Since it, when did that shit, when did that shit come out? It's my eighth popular video, but I can't front. I haven't listened to this song. I haven't listened to any song in 2093 in two months. Like, I don't know, like, bro. Money like it's Bollywood, and when you get surprised with this shit. Oh, no. The bigger people who are like in competition with him, they come in with the last final blow, like it's Mortal Kombat doing some all sorts of like fucking X circle triangle combos. Finish him. <laughs> And they're trying to they're, they're trying to take him out. It would all start with the rollout of destroy Lone. Why out. niggas moving like Yeet is done? He not done, nigga. He just yo, he just dropped, he just shitted out three new songs and they were fire. I don't know why he didn't put them on the album. But I feel like he could drop to make him drop an EP. Just drop drop a calm EP or some or or sing like drop some more singles, you feel me? And show these niggas that he not done. Cause I don't think he's done, gang. I just feel like that nigga just wanted to experiment. Me personally, I didn't like that. I didn't really enjoy the album. I was fucking with it though. There's a difference. Album Love Lasts Forever, where him and Lil 88 will be pushing this Black America branding, with Lil 88 also announcing he will be executively producing the entire project. Now, after being given this role, it seemed like Lil 88 was getting a little too big for his boots, as on the 9th of April this year, he would tweet, Stop comparing my partners to this Eminem with autotune and reverb, which of course is directly aimed at Yee. And you might be asking, how do you know it's aimed at him? Well, my partners is referring to Ken and Lone, as they're all close friends and part of the Opium Squadron. Then Eminem is him referring to a white rapper that Ken and Lone are competing with. So of course, it's Yeet. Lil 88 would then go on to like a fan's reply, which read, Bro trying to get his urban fans back after a year of dressing like a futuristic cowboy. Y'all can keep it. Which is him poking fun at Yeet with the fact that he's gone from dressing like a thug to this futuristic 2093 cyberpunk style and now that his fans aren't really liking it he's trying yeah i wasn't really i think like i don't know like i'll fuck with it because i always heard the tron like music in his beat selection you feel me and it, and it'd be tough like king tonka is fire i'm gonna say it again it should have been on the fucking album but it wasn't i fuck with it but I felt like he was doing a little bit too much cyberpunk. I don't know. 2093 cyberpunk style. And now that his fans aren't really liking it, he's trying to revert back almost making him look desperate. The post this reply was under was Underground Sound, which is a well-known underground meme page which posted, Ye is attempting to- Yeah, I saw this. I saw I saw this post. I saw this story. Ye is attempting to regain aura with recent IG stories. Look, Geeky, I'm King Tonk. Like, bro, King Tonka is fire. You know what's crazy? Well, when I look at my channel, I'm dead ass wondering, like, I thought, I figured that video was gonna go crazy, but it hasn't, it hasn't gone crazy yet. You gotta give it some time. It's only at 16 views, but like, this shit is vital. 
Like, both songs. Song. Like, Bridge Challenge Junkie. Chash Junkie. That shit is fire. And to regain aura with his recent Instagram stories, which again is him making fun of Yeet that he's trying to bring back the entire Geeker gimmick. And Lil 88 would keep going as he would tweet lyrics from Ken Carson's Me and My Cup. Gimmick and Lil 88 would is that nigga Mexican? Would keep going as he would tweet lyrics from Ken Carson's Me and My Cup. I don't fuck with these fellas like they got a disease, with it of course being only aimed at one man, Ye, and the fact that Lil 88 and his group don't mess with him anymore. So now at this point in time, fans are kind of confused. First of all, why is this not really liked nor well known producer wilding out on Twitter? And at first, fans thought he was just sabotaging Opium's relationship with Ye for no apparent reason. As throughout the years, as I just showed you in the video, they were all cool. Well, if we look further into Lil 88 replies on Twitter, it seemed like the whole thing could have just been for promo, as he would also be seen teasing the release date for the show Lonely's Love Last Forever project by tweeting April 2nd? Question mark. So, okay, it's just this opium producer wilding out on Twitter. Well, no, things will quickly turn very serious, as Ken Carson and Destroy Lonely themselves would like the cryptic tweet from Lil 88, where he was quoting lyrics from Me and My Cup. So it seemed like the opium twins were in on it too, and things were about to get serious, and they would. Lil 88 would then send more shots at Yee after the underground news page Bobalam made an Instagram post about all this Twitter warfare where a fan would comment he, in reference to Yee, not gonna respond cause he can't effing grab and don't know shh about hip hop he a effing guest and Lil 88 would like this post which bring more attention to the entire beef. So before we get into Yee's response to all of this, why is Opium actually coming at Yee? Why Ye? niggas doing well, there that? Is no clear that shit making them, making, giving them a bad look, they look like some... That's dick routing. Answer, but I'll go over some theories. Firstly, the most not true one would probably be when Bobalam came out on stream and stated Ken Carson was mad at Yeet that he leaked their collab pull up as apparently his part wasn't finished and his vocals sounded off, which supposedly Ken took as Yeet trying to degrade his musical ability to the public. So allegedly, you know that Yeet and Ken Carson leak, Ken and Yeet pull up. So apparently the beef is Have I ever heard when that? Yeet leaked it or whatever, made an exclusive, Ken feels like he left a bad mix or bad verse from Ken on that leak and kind of like made it so he was the better verse or whatever, so he- I got Nigga, he sounds fine. Let's go, bro. Bro, he sounds fine, bro. Bodied him, you know what I mean? So that's where it all started. I don't know, like, you know how they've been beefing a lot? Mm -hmm. So that's why. Now, if you read the comments to this clip on YouTube, fans were quick to disprove it, especially with the fact that it wasn't an exclusive leak by Ye or anything. It just happened to leak. And why would a random leak annoy Ken Carson so much to the point he's going to start an entire beef with one of his supposed friends? It would be silly and make him look immature. Then the second theory is, Ken and Lone want this beef, firstly to create hype for Lone's album, Love Lasts Forever, and Ken's deluxe, More Chaos. But they just got Lil 88 to instigate it, so they don't look like the bad guys. Especially that Lone and Lil 88 are pushing this black America image, that they are the minority getting rich, famous and successful, so they're trying to take down their competition, they are the minority getting rich, Lone and Lil 88 are pushing this black America America image that they are the minority getting rich, famous, and successful. So they're trying to take down their competition, the white Eminem sounding America guy, Yeet, who of course is not black and does not fit in the motto they are pushing. Then what also plays a part is the Drake versus the entire industry beef. Recently, Carti and Lil 88 were both featured on Metro Boomin's and Future's collab tape, which played a part in the entire hip hop war going on right now. And of course, Yeet would be presumably on Drake's side, as he has multiple songs with him and was even spotting wearing an OVO chain in an Instagram post. So that beef in itself played a oh, factor shit. in them starting the attack on Ye. So to sum it up, Opium wants to F care front. I fuck with Ken Carson's music. I haven't really gotten into the to lonely shit, but I generally feel like Ye is better than both of them niggas. Care front. He's better than both of them niggas. I'm not gonna lie to you. And if he's on the side with OVO, they can make bangers. I need to hear another banger. Oh, I don't give a fuck. It's, it's not enough. I don't give a fuck. No pun intended. Like, I need another one. I need to hear another one. 
F up Yi because he's a white guy and is the only guy in their generation pulling better numbers than them. So now it's time for Yi to bite back. Just a day after Opium was going in on him on Twitter, Yi saw that his position at the top was under attack and that people were playing with his name. So to prove to everyone who the GO is, he would announce on his Instagram story that he is dropping two albums this year. Two Ooh, albums this year. I, this, is, this is what I saw. I'm ready for that. Let me hear that second album. Where that shit coming out, man? I need to hear it. Just to show you who the what, hashtag LS, hashtag ADL, which stands for Lifestyle and The Dangerous Life, with those being the names of the two albums he's dropping this year. So it seems like Yee is only dropping these albums just to prove to Wait. everyone he's dropping this stands for Lifestyle, show you who the what, hashtag LS, hashtag ADL, which stands for Lifestyle and The Dangerous Life, with those being the names of the two albums he's dropping this year. So it seems like Yee is only dropping- What? I thought he already- Oh, that's not a thing yet. Oh, I'm retarded. Nah, he- Yo, I thought 2 was gonna be 2093 and then something else. He's dropping a whole entire new one. Oh my god. He's dropping a whole entirely two new ones. That's gonna be a great day for the reactors, man. I'm a number one rich ass junkie. I never even heard Never Quit. Can't front. In these albums just to the, prove to everyone drip. he's him meaning in total in 2024 he would be dropping three albums including 2019 i feel like he should now, go back to dressing like that though. if he does go ahead with this it could really show everyone and these opium guys who really is at the top but he wasn't done there he wasn't just going to talk the talk on the net he would then go on to preview a new snippet titled king tonka where he just went in over this insane rage beat with the caption king fire. tonka geek lifestyle geek and geek Geek 2. Basically announcing to everyone the oldie is back. He would also preview a new snippet called Scary, which fans thought was a diss at Opium, as not only was it previewed a day after all this Twitter stuff, but also due to the lyrics. I'm a god compared to you, a lil ass shrimp, I'm a barracuda, it's an embarrassing comparison, which is Yeet standing his ground that he is a simply bigger artist than Ken and Lone. I mean, I showed you guys the album sales earlier on, Ken and Lone aren't near I putting mean, the same numbers. You fake is as Yeet. Yeet would then go on an Instagram live where he would preview a snippet, shut up. Now that wasn't the important part. Fans noticed that during the live, Yeet had shown the table in front of him, which had a debit card, a rolled up bill, and lots of sugary powder on the table. If you get card, a rolled up bill. During the live, Yi had shown the table in front of him, which had a debit card going on Instagram live where he would preview a snippet, shut up. Now that wasn't the important part. Fans noticed Noticed that Wait, during the sugar. live, Yi had shown the table in front of him, which had a debit card, a rolled up bill, and lots of sugary powder on the table. If you guys know what I'm talking about, meaning he's back on the substances. And it seemed like little 88 saw this and started making fun of him on Twitter, as he would tweet a SoundCloud link to a Young Thug song titled Snort You a Line, which was literally posted minutes after Yi went on that Instagram live with the sugary powder on the table. So it's obvious. Is aimed at ye. A fan will reply to Lil 88's tweet saying, You a fan, Lem Fan. Now, nah, that I ain't gonna lie, that is some fan shit. You, want, you a dick rider, I'm not even gonna lie to you. How? You see. That, that nigga probably went live just to, just to try to bait you to see if you was gonna respond. I ain't gonna lie, that's some dick rider shit. Saying he ain't acknowledging shh, and now you're trying to drag it on to get a reaction. Basically saying that Lil 88 keeps on dragging this nigga beef said you on. A fan, I mean, LMAO. if you even want to call it a beef, since it's very one side. Bro, this is not even real beef because the nigga not, is not responding. He's dead ass egoing. Yo, he's egoing these niggas. That's kind of crazy. I'm not gonna lie. I did. Another as, as long as Destroy and Ken aren't like really responding like it's not morally so them that's actually in on the act it's just the dick riding producer if that is the producer i don't know from what i can see this nigga's dick riding i'm not gonna lie fan will reply and defend lil 88 saying he just posted a young thug song gang what does this have to do with ye which is when lil 88 would quote saying right and you know what's crazy the the addy nigga didn't even say ye so this nigga's implying that it was for ye if you ain't noticed look at the tweet now once did the nigga say ye he said ye and this nigga, the little what are the 88 nigga, he didn't respond to 80. He re, he re, he re, he quote tweeted this nigga. So that's how you know it's about you. Come on.
Wang Gang, what does this have to do with Yi? Which is when the 88 would quote, saying, right? And I'm just like, come on, man. This producer is clearly trying to create beef to bring attention to Destroyed on his album. That's then terrible. he's going to act like he has no idea what's going on. If he's trying to destroy it on his album. I'm just like, come on, man. This producer. Okay, so he's a producer. So this is, yeah, this is, this is, I just said this 30 minutes ago. Y'all, yo, y'all producers need to stay in a producer's place. I feel like y'all shouldn't be in rapper's business, rapper beef business. Like, that shit is corny. Just make their fucking songs, mix their shit, and get paid by them niggas. Like, you doing a lot, bro. So is clearly trying to create beef to bring attention to Destroyed on his album. Then he's going to act like he has no idea what's going on. If you're going to start stuff and this people, at least stand your ground when they confront you. Under this quote tweet from Lil 88, Yeet and Opium fans would have continued arguing though. Lil 88 mad, most of the artists he produced for can't top Yeet's monthly listeners, which is the fans saying that the people Lil 88 produces for, Ken and Lone, aren't pulling the same numbers as Yeet. Which is when a fan would reply with, he be produced from MFers that have two times these numbers stop being delusional. As though 88 managed to get MFers. Bro, my nigga, that's Playboy Cardi. Yo, this nigga is brain dead. Nigga, that's Playboy Cardi, bro. What the fuck? Use your brain. That have two times these numbers stop being delusional. As though 88 managed to get a placement on the song Bino from Hollow the Red, meaning he had produced for Carti, which Lil 88 would retweet, which was another diss to Ye. So before we move on to the further beef between Lil 88 and this time Ye's producer Tragic, we can see that Opium's plan has kind of worked. As now the Yeet and Opium fan bases were split. Beforehand, but you can't black ball Yeet. Yeet is bigger than these niggas. The Yeet and Opium community basically coexisted, and everyone was like, at this point. Yeet doesn't even need to like be around any nigga that's in the underground, bro. Just supporting this new wave of rappers, but now all this Twitter beef has split them in half, which works in Opium's favor. Now, Lil 88 would continue with this Twitter standoff after he posted DMs with Yeet's producer. I mentioned before, <laughs> Tragic, where Tragic said, Fella, your song isn't platinum, I'm plat on my own. Which is Tragic referencing him and Yeet going platinum with the song Money So Big. And Tragic would also point out the fact he did it on his own. Whereas the majority of placements that 88 has are co-produced with two or three additional producers on the track with him. With a lot of the times it being Starboy and Out of Town doing all the work. I even saw this funny tweet on Twitter and it was like, all Lil 88 did was add the 808 Mafia tag to the start of the beat. Anyways, so Lil 88 would post these DMs with the caption, Fella's been hating on the kid, in the shadows, but when I pop out in the light, I'm the villain, huh? And guys, I'll be real, he's just yapping. He's making he it seem yapping, like Tragic is out. hating and flexing on him for no reason, when in fact, this entire time, Lil 88 has been dissing his brother publicly. And Tragic even kept all this stuff off social media and just messaged Lil 88 privately but it's him who is now deciding to do all this stuff on twitter which is just cringe lil 88 would then share more messages between him and tragic which read if your uncle wasn't tm you wouldn't be here little boy which is tragic referencing the fact lil 88's uncle is tm 88 who is a well-known producer with huge placements and in the group 808 mafia somewhat calling lil 88 a nepo baby or basically saying without tm 88 his uncle he wouldn't be getting all these placements and connections Lil 88 would then show another message from Tragic which read, Tell someone to help you get some placements bro. And it seemed like Tragic was sick of Lil 88, so he decided to post some comments on his story. Fella could be on the biggest album of the year, somehow they still bring you up. Put a name on it, let the fans know how you commented on my page thinking you're on your finster. So it seemed like Tragic is accusing Lil 88 of commenting on his post without realising he was on his main account. Which is some fanboy stuff, I can't lie. Tragic would post another story saying, Or how I personally DM'd you first like a man and you ducked my calls i'm not with this internet shh i hate i even have to do this but i refuse to look like a hater when that ain't the truth and tragic has a point if lil 88 actually has something against ye or tragic maybe sort it out between yourselves sure. why are you making it public on twitter in front of everyone but from then on, things would be kept relatively quiet, and it seemed like the entire beef kind of died down. Again, if you even want to call it that, because it's just opium attacking Yeet for no reason. But Yeet would drop a two-pack on the 3rd of May, containing songs King Tonka and Heavy Stunts with Don Tolliver. In none of these songs did Yeet address the beef directly, however, some of the lines could have been potentially aimed at the dispute going on right now. In the song Heavy Stunts, Yeet says the lines, And I won't talk em, I'm going Bray, I'm going Cray. B, I'm the one, I'm not the two, I'm not the three. 
three. Like the check when it bounced, leaving it when it in. How you gonna talk to me? Where he is stating that he's the biggest out of the artists in his generation and that Ken and Lone can't even talk to him because he is so much bigger than them. And this two pack actually stirred up more arguments between the Yeet and Opium communities. As recently, Ken Carson dropped his highly anticipated single, Overseas, which gained 1.2 million streams on its first day and debuted at number 79 on the Billboard Hot 100. Now, what? Now, there was some talk about this being botted due to the surprisingly high streams, however it was a grail for the Opium fans, so no one is really sure if the numbers were legit. Now in the 2 pack Yeet dropped, none of the songs charted on Billboard and didn't even break 1 million streams each. And actually with the image I'm showing on screen now, I found after I recorded the video, but King Tonga did not chart on Spotify at all. Which obviously is very low. If Ken Carson's singles are reaching on Billboard and Yeet is not charting on Spotify, which is way easier to do. So Opium fans started comparing numbers with Yeet. And as we conclude this beef, you can see Opium's plans work. They have managed to split the community in half and are now even somehow competing with Yeet's numbers. Because truthfully beforehand, Yeet was treated by all these underground listeners as the top dog that is going mainstream. And Ken alone with a little cool Opium guy signed to Carty, you know, they were always cheered on on every little milestone they achieved. But now it's a full-fledged war and they are trying to compete and overtake Yeet. And it seems like the overall agenda has changed. So it's throughout this how video, we don't know the though. true reason why this entire beef started. Bro, However, King Tonga is fire, bro. Like, I genuinely believe that, is, that was a 10 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10. How did it not chart? Hopefully from the stuff I went through and some of the theories I spoke on in this video, you have been able to make your own conclusion. And now as fans, all we can do is wait and see how things turn out. Maybe once Ken and Lone drop their next project, they will potentially start taking over Yeet if Yeet doesn't regain his old fans back after dropping 2093. 2093 sold 70,000 first week and debuted at number 2, and Ken and Lone would have to beat that, which is really high. A Great Chaos sold 49,000, which is surprisingly high considering none of the songs charted on. And what's good about this is, well, at least for me, being that I'm like somewhat relatively new listening to both or all of them niggas, I gotta start listening to, to, to Lonely. I feel like I don't even know who's gonna come out on top. I feel like it might be, might be Yeet. I'm not too sure because I'm pretty sure Yeet is on vacation right now. But it might be, it might be Ken and Destroy because for me, uh, I think not too long ago, niggas heard that Ken actually used to produce before making music, but he loved making music more than producing. For me, so he might just make his shit even faster. Shit, who knows? I would like to hear another EP out of Ken. And I gotta, I gotta, I gotta tune in with, uh, with Destroy. Any of y'all favorite songs from Destroy Lonely? Say it in the comments, let me check it out, you feel me? I never really listened to Bro For Real, but yeah, no cap. Billboard, and does seem slightly suspicious, so I'll be hot, honest. Bro. Then Destroy Lonely did sell 27,000k, but that was with 26 songs? Which again, was insanely high. I really doubt, personally, Ken and Lone would be able to overtake Yeet, simply because when Yeet was in his prime, he was dropping TikTok bangers every week. Like, this guy has multiple platinum and gold hits. I think Ken Ken's Yale went gold so far, but that's about it. Just these opium guys, their sound is too niche and they don't have that hit factor. They have a core fan base, but don't have the hit making ability Yeet has. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think Ken alone have the potential to overtake Yeet? Do you guys think we will ever get to hit? I don't know. I feel like it really depends on if they're dropping like four to five bangers in their album it has to it has to be like four to five bro out of like whatever however much songs it is 23 26 18 doesn't matter it needs to be like four to five it's gonna be good enough but yeet i really want to see yeet bounce back because i'm not gonna lie i did not enjoy 2023 but i feel like he could come back i feel like he could come back because he just dropped fucking king tonka and another one and heli man that shit was fire so clearly he has good music bro he has he still has some good music after 2093 so hopefully he doesn't try to do that beast selection or whatever you want to call that the cyberpunk bullshit just do like you feel me or just log in bro and yeah i feel like they shouldn't even be beefing that produces a dick rider in my opinion but y'all let me know what y'all think Thought it was none, got none for free. So you ain't getting none from me. I married a dumb deal for the fee. In the transport, pushing the pee. In the floor, see, dropping the G. 100 o'clock TP, geek on the beat. Yeah, like, those who don't hear this fam.